Surface reconstruction addresses the problem of transforming a discrete signal such as image or lighter point clouds to a continuous signal which we call a watertight surface. And in this presentation I will introduce a novel method for learning based watertight surface reconstruction which scales to large scenes such as the one shown here thanks to the use of a memory efficient Delaunay graph neural network. Before explaining the method in detail, a brief summary of previous work addressing the problem of surface reconstruction. Existing approaches may be classified into the two groups of implicit and explicit methods. The main difference behind the two methods is shown here at step 3. Here implicit methods try to generate or solve for a function that is valid everywhere in the domain, while explicit methods simply try to discriminate between full and empty space. This makes explicit methods usually less memory intensive and it is thus easier to scale them to large point clouds. Nonetheless, there are very popular implementations for both methods. Implicit surface reconstruction has traditionally been solved by solving a system of Poisson equations and more recently deep learning approaches using so-called implicit neural representations have become very popular. We mention only two examples here to which we compare our results but the general idea behind almost all of these learning methods is to represent the implicit function directly by a neural network. In contrast, in explicit methods there is much less work in learning-based approaches, although very recently there are contributions. But most closely related to the work I'm going to present here are graph cut-based methods working on Delaunay triangulations. Our method is also based on this idea and we specifically add a contribution for improving the empty full classification in such an approach. We developed a deep learning method based on surface reconstruction, a deep learning based surface reconstruction method, um, which operates on a 3D Delaunay triangulation. Our method learns to classify um, Delaunay tetrahedra as empty or full by using local geometric and visibility information. And in contrast to many other learning based methods, our method can be applied on real world large scale point clouds such as the one shown here. To explain in more detail how our algorithm works, I'm going to resort to a small toy example. So as input we have a set of points in R3 and now we apply a Delaunay triangulation to the point set. In 3D it is actually more accurate to call it a tetrahedralization. And the upside of the Delaunay tetrahedralization compared to a regular tessellation such as a voxelization for example is that we gain a partition of space which is adaptive to the local point density. And to help us to extract a surface based on this, on this tessellation we make use of another commonly available information in our approach which is the position of the sensors that recorded the point set. So here in green we show the sensors such as cameras or LiDAR scanners and we can now draw so-called lines of sight which are lines between all input points and their corresponding sensor. We can further extend the lines of sight to mark the space just behind an input point. And thanks to the Delaunay triangulation we can use this visibility information to attribute empty full labels to specific areas of space and this allows us to extract the surface as the interface between all empty and full tetrahedra. The extracted surface is a triangle mesh interpolating the input point set, it is visibility consistent and it is watertight and non-self-intersecting. Non Now zooming in on the point cloud from the beginning we can see that a real point acquisition is often contaminated with defects such as noise and outliers. 
And such defects can lead to problems when we want to use the sort of trivial rules that I have just used before to apply an empty full labeling to the tetrahedralization. realization. Here for the two tetrahedra marked with a question mark, the empty full labeling is ambiguous or unclear. The tetrahedra on the left lies behind as well as in front of an input point, and the tetrahedron on the right has no associated visibility information at all. Now the common approach to solve this problem is to find a globally optimal empty full labeling by minimizing an energy such as the one presented here, which was introduced by Labatue et al. Now this energy formulation is based on a data term which tries to achieve three things. So first, a tetrahedra containing a sensor should always be labeled um, empty. We don't have such an example here. But a uh, second neighboring tetrahedra crossed by the same line of sight should have the same label. And third, um, as we've already seen, cells directly behind an input point should be classified as full. Now in conflicting areas or for tetrahedra without any visibility information, labels are propagated based on a prior that favors smooth surfaces. And then this energy can efficiently be minimized using graph cuts to find a globally optimal empty full labeling for all tetrahedra. Now this method is very popular because it leads to impressive visual results for, for very large scale point clouds, but it cannot guarantee to always make the best decision locally. And to overcome this limitation in our work, we replace the data term in this energy by empty full likelihoods, which we predict by a graph neural network. And this graph neural network operates on the dual of the Dirlani triangulation, as we've shown here. And the network aggregates geometric and visibility information from the local neighborhood of each tetrahedron. And it then independently infers an empty full likelihood for each tetrahedron in the tetrahedralization. And this independent, or we can call it a tetrahedron wise prediction, is a very important step of our method because it helps us to achieve our two main goals. So the first one is scalability. By doing the empty full um, prediction per tetrahedron, we never have to embed the full graph of an object or a scene, and the memory requirements only depend on the size of a small subgraph around the local neighborhood of a tetrahedron. And second, the local predictions help us to achieve a high generalization of our learning algorithm. The reason for this is that we only look at local shape patterns of an object. And such local shape patterns are usually independent of the object category. So when we train our network on small subgraphs of defective input point clouds, such as the ones we show here, our network learns to be robust against noise and outliers present in the input. And thus it leads to more accurate empty full predictions and finally to a more accurate surface. And to train our network, we synthetically scan shapes from the ShapeNet library. And we then create the Launi triangulations from these defect latent scans. And because we know the ground truth surface, we can train our network with the ground truth empty full value of each tetrahedron. And to allow our network to predict these values, the, the empty full values, we extract a set of 12 features for each tetrahedron. So some of the features are visualized here on the left. And uh, the first eight features are based on visibility information. They can be efficiently extracted by simply traversing the Delaunay triangulation along the line of sight, uh, along the, the lines of sight. And the other four features are morphological features characterizing the shape of a tetrahedron. 
Now, after extracting these features for all tetrahedra, um, we select random tetrahedra of our training objects and sample subgraphs around the local neighbor neighborhood of this tetrahedra. So here we show a two-hop subgraph around the target tetrahedron in the center. Um, in our implementation, we found that four-hop subgraphs work best as they give a nice trade-off between a large receptive field for the network, but the subgraphs are still small enough to efficiently process and to be efficiently processed and also to generalize well across different um, different objects. And now we start by initializing all tetrahedra in this in the subgraph with the twelve features shown before. And we then apply a graph convolutional scheme, which is a graph search from Hamilton et al. So what happens here is that we start by aggregating the initial feature information around a tetrahedron's wandering neighborhood. We then take the featurized mean values over all neighbors and concatenate this with the tetrahedron's own feature values. We then process this information with a linear layer, which is followed by a normalization and activation function, which finally leads to the first layer embedding for all the, for, for all the tetrahedra that are shown here in purple. And then we iteratively apply this process until we reach the target tetrahedron in the center, in the center of the subgraph. And, um, Finally, the embedding of the target tetrahedron is processed by an MLP, which outputs the empty full prediction. So we train the weights of this MLP and the linear layers of the graph convolutions with uh, subgraphs as extracted from the, the ShapeNet objects. And now to validate that the network can predict empty full values for unseen new shapes, which are not present in, in the training set, we use the surface reconstruction benchmark of Berger et al. The benchmark consists of um, the five different shapes shown here. And um, we scan these shapes as well as our, training, uh, as well as our training data with uh, five different scanner settings, which are given in the supplementary material of the paper to make the scans reproducible. And here they are exemplified on this so-called dancing, dancing children object of the benchmark. And now we applied our method and also other learning and non-learning based methods to reconstruct a closed surface from these defective scans. <coughs> and then we measured the chamfer distance as well as the volumetric intersection over union of the reconstructions compared to the ground truth shapes. And we can see that our method performs best over all scanner settings. And what is important to note here is that we kept the scanner settings, the, the, the settings of the methods, and we kept the same um, trained um, model of our methods for for all um, the five different scanner settings. But first to validate our approach we, we first show a reconstruction of a high resolution scan. This is an easy problem for which uh, most methods produce a high quality surface. We compare our method shown on the right to an implicit learning based method which is convolutional occupancy networks. And this method is also trained on shape net objects but just just like ours but since it globally embeds these objects it learns a shape space which is specific to the categories of the shape net library. Now this can be an upside if one wants to reconstruct objects from these specific categories but we can see that the algorithm does not perform well on unseen shapes from completely unrelated categories. Our method working completely local does not have such a problem. And um, we also compare to another implicit method, which is the screen pass algorithm, and to the method of Labatu et al., which I introduced before, 
which is also using visibility information. And finally, a very difficult scan um, which includes a high level of noise and outliers and we can see that um, also our reconstruction is noisy but still it produces a smoother and more accurate result than all other methods or all other methods that we tested here and um, we choose to evaluate and also train our methods on such a difficult problem because we later want to see how the method performs um, when reconstructing a surface from real-world MBS point clouds that um, often have such a, such a high level of defects. Um, and we do this in the following, and for the following reconstructions again we use the same model trained on the ShapeNet library. So here we show a result on an MVS point cloud from the ETH3D dataset. Um, this whole scene has more than 1 million points and we again triangulate the point cloud and again locally predict empty full likelihoods um, for, which, for, for, for each of the resulting tetrahedra. And on the right we then show our reconstructed surface which is textured here. Um, but if we zoom in, we can see again that this is a difficult problem, even for our algorithm. However, when we compare the reconstruction result to a method which, similar to Labatu, directly uses the sort of handcrafted rules for calculating the empty full likelihoods, which are also then processed in an energy formulation, we can see that um, in our reconstructed surface, the staircase and also this um, texture on the wall is much better reconstructed. Here we show another scene from the ETH3D dataset with around 2.5 million points together with our reconstructed surface. And again we compare it to a, a screen plus or reconstruction and another energy-based method which um, both of these methods are still one of the few surface reconstruction methods which can really scale to, to large-scale scenes. But still our algorithm produces a more accurate and a more complete reconstruction. The datasets that we use for evaluating our method are already online and our code as well as our pre-trained models will also be online soon. Thank you for your attention.